This video shows the concept of logging, and we will compose the drawing operation by using logging viewer and logging trend graph. Logging performs function which save value in HMI NV RAM when the specified conditions are met. This is commonly used to check the change in the device value you want to monitor. You can check your history or trend graph in HMI and back it up with CSV and PDF files. For example, there are elements that need to be checked periodically, such as temperature and humidity, on farms that grow vegetables. You can set logging to periodically view the history of the values of the target, such as temperature and humidity, and visually check the trend of changes through logging trend graphs. If you decide which device to log, you must set the execution condition for when logging will run. There are two logging conditions, periodic logging, which requires number of repetitions and repeat period, and conditional logging, which enables logging based on the status of bit device. Periodic logging performs logging at a specified number of times at a set time by the user or when the bit device is on or off. Conditional logging performs one logging action when the bit device you set is on, off, or changed. I will set logging to check history through logging viewer and logging trend graph. You can set a total of 64 logging by selecting logging in the project window. Double-click the cell to pop up the logging settings window. First, set up the logging target device. The target device can be selected between a bit and word device. When setting up a word device, you can choose between 16-bit and 32-bit. If you set device you want to logging and set the number of devices, the number of devices is the number of consecutive devices you set. For example, if you set the number of devices to 4, log the consecutive devices HW0, HW1, HW2, and HW3. You can set up to 100 consecutive devices. Next, we will set logging conditions. Logging conditions mean the conditions for logging when you will log. Logging conditions include periodic logging and conditional logging. Periodic logging performs logging behavior at a specified number of times at a set time by the user or when the bit device is on or off. Periodic logging must be set when it starts, and you can set the time zone you want every hour, every day, every week, every month, every year, and once. It can also be set to when the bit device rises or falls. Let's make a logging that starts every hour and repeats every 10 minutes. If the current time is 2.45, logging starts at 3 o'clock, which is the set time of every hour. Perform the first logging operation at 3 o'clock then the second logging operation at 3.10, the third at 3.20, the fourth at 3.30, the fifth at 3.40, and the sixth at 3.50. Then, the second logging starts at 4 o'clock on the dot, and logging operates total of 6 every 10 minutes. This means that logging continues every 10 minutes. You can set a maximum of 255 iterations. Even if the logging conditions are correct, 
New logging does not start if the previous logging is not finished. Next, let's set up conditional logging. Conditional logging performs once logging when the bit device you set is on or off or changed. Conditional logging selects a bit device trigger condition to perform logging only when that bit device condition is satisfied. Let's create a logging that repeats every one second using the internal special device. If you select a tag, select the timer device on off timer for one second. Because it repeats on off every one second, if you select a rising edge or falling edge, logging is performed every one second. Next, let's set backup area and buffer manage. By default, logged data is stored in NVRAM inside HMI. Once logging backup is enabled, data in NVRAM can be backed up to external storage devices with CSV and PDF files. Backup data is saved with CF card, USB memory, and SD card. It may vary by HMI model. If you check the use ring buffer, overwrite logging data when the storage area is full. If you check auto backup if area full is all enabled, it saves data stored automatically to the specified storage medium when the logging area is all used up. It cannot be used in duplicate with use ring buffer. When the user uses the logging backup, logging data in NVRAM is moved to the backup storage device and logging data in NVRAM is deleted. However, if you set do not clear log area at backup, logging data will not be deleted even if it is backed up. Backup files are saved as CSV files, encrypted CSV files, CSV files, and PDF files. To backup, you must set a backup device. When the set bit device is on, it backs up logging data stored in NVRAM to external storage device. You need to set up the backup completion device as well. The backup completion device turns on when the backup is complete to the external storage device. You can set the size of the storage area for each logging. Calculate the logging size on the right. Check whether it is used or not and assign the calculated size to the left logging size. The sum of all logging checked for use on the left will be the logging maximum size. The maximum size of the overall logging varies from HMI model to model. Let's calculate the size of the data stored in NVRAM for an hour. We set four devices. They are logged every one second, 3,600 times per hour. Check the calculated size set it to the left size and check whether it is enabled or disabled. Let's move to the base screen and check the logging data through the object. The logging data you can set can be viewed in tabular logging viewers and logging trend graph. Let's first create a logging viewer object. The logging number is the number of the logging list of common data. In the display tab, you can set the shape of the table. You can change the number of rows and the number of columns to see that the table shape changes. You can also set the appearance of a frame, change the color of the frame, color of the line, and so on. Also, you can change the date and time format. On the header tab, you can change the color and font of the header. 
You can also change the display format of your data in common. The header is marked value by default, which allows you to edit the header in the index you want. The number in the logging index starts with 1 on the logging target device and increases the index number by 1 on the consecutive device. For example, if four devices are set to be logged from HW0, four consecutive devices HW0 is number 1, HW1 is number 2, HW2 is number 3, HW3 is number 4. If you try to change the size of the logging table, it does not change. This is because the size of the table is automatically determined by the number of rows, columns, and string sizes. However, if you check setting of cell of size, you can change the size of each cell manually. If you select setting device size per column, you can change device sizes individually, and you can change the display format individually. You can change the font and size of characters on the Characters tab. And if you change the character size, the size of the table changes automatically. Let's create a special switch in the Logging Viewer. Select the special switch and place it on the screen. Special switches exist for logging vertical list views and logging horizontal list views. The logging vertical list view acts like scrolling up and down. The logging horizontal list view acts as a movement of columns. Let's create a switch that moves up one line in the logging vertical list view. Copy the switch you created and change it to a switch that moves down one line this time. Simulators allow you to see logging data. You can check the history by moving up and down through the special switch. A logging trend graph displays logging data stored in NVRAM as a broken line graph. You can easily see the trend of changes in your data through logging trend graphs. In the object, select Logging Trend Graph. Draw onto the screen. First, set the logging number on the main tab. The logging number means 1 to 64 set in logging. Index refers to the logging destination device. You can set up to 20 indices. You can change the line color, line shape, and line width individually. Line shapes have two options, solid line and dotted line. Lead can enter a value between 1 and 10 pixels when solid. You can set the display criteria to each index as a bit device. Each index is assigned from the set bit device to the continuous device. Lines are visible when the set bit device is on. Set the maximum and minimum values of the data to display on the Max Minimum tab. The maximum and minimum values can be specified as individual indices or as a whole. You can enter a fixed value or set by the device value.
The maximum minimum may vary for each line. Even if the value is the same, the value is displayed at different locations depending on the maximum and minimum values. The Display tab sets the shape of the visible graph. The number of displays in x-axis indicates the number of data that will be displayed on the graph. Up to 3 to 120 is possible. It can be variable by fixed value or device value. You can set the number of scale and the width of scale. The scale width is in pixels, and the scale color can also be changed. The number of samples to scroll is the number of data that you move to draw the next data when the x-axis end is reached as the graph currently displayed on the screen is drawn. When you select Use Cursor on the Cursors tab and touch the graph area, a vertical line is drawn in the middle of the displayed data. If you set Weather to save cursor information, the data at the point where the current cursor is located is logged, and the values are stored on the device. A reference line is a line that displays the location of a specific value that you set in addition to the maximum and minimum values. Reference lines can be set to fixed values or device values. Data history can be checked through a special switch related to the logging trend graph. Let's create a special switch and create a switch that moves using the previous and next data views of this special switch. Copy the special switch you created and change it to the next data movement switch. The clock object also allows you to check the most recent time, oldest time, and cursor position time of the current graph. First, create the clock with the oldest time. Copy and change to the most recent time. Then copy one more and change it to the cursor position time. Let's use the simulator to check the operation. Click in the graph area to draw the cursor in the middle. Click again and the cursor will disappear. When the graph is drawn, it is possible to move left and right by operating the special switch. Thank you.